Welcome back to the channel, lads and ladies, and welcome to me getting my vertical stabilizer shot off of my Phantom. This is the second time this has happened to me, and the first time that I've actually survived for a while. I blame high ping and supersonic speeds for the terribleness that happened last time uh, this occurred. But I thought I would share this clip with you for reasons that will become apparent. We have this V-shaped tail that gives us a little bit more uh, stability than we would otherwise have with our vertical stabilizer torn off, but also it means that it's a lot more tricky to adjust our heading. And you may have noticed this is World War Mode, and we are heading for the exit zone. So if we manage to get to a certain spot on the map, the game will just assume that everything is fine and the aircraft was successfully returned to base. And where are we? Oh, we're a little bit off. Let's adjust our course here. Any second now and we can pee out of the aircraft. I wonder what it would be like to pee out of an aircraft at supersonic speeds. Your, uh, your urine stream catching the jet stream, would uh, make little little shock waves as it broke back out of the sound barrier. That'd be interesting. Supersonic piss. And on a completely different note, here's Connor 102 in the, I almost said BF-109, the AH-1G. And with a volley of rockets picking up his second kill, his third kill, a fourth critically wounded and moving around for the finishing blow with the twin chin mounted 40 millimeter heat grenade launching grenade launchers as uh as some some native peoples do a little bit of throat singing in the background and just the right shot through the roof with the grenades of that USSR SPG. Even with a critically damaged engine, he lands, nice jingles landing there, on the capture zone and begins capping, only to be taken down by the only thing powerful enough to wipe him off the map, a yak. <laughs> and here we are with another fast-paced replay action, Admiral Hip Hip, I am about to show you some gameplay of my own, but I thought I'd throw a couple of quick replay clips into the mix. So thanks to Connor and Admiral Hip Hip for sharing their experiences in the game. Always a pleasure. And on that note, the MiG-19, a very enjoyable aircraft, the last dogfighter in top tier of War Thunder. And an aircraft that uh, is extremely capable in the turning, energy fighting, no longer meta of top tier. This is supposed to be missile thunder, and yet people, hard G turning, rolling and spinning and spiraling down in nothing other than the Phantom II, a very capable aircraft that loves to be high speed and low altitude and not at all using the right strategies against the MiG 9A. As you see, Admiral Hip Hip pick up a quick second kill and set his sights on the fur ball below. This is a beautiful jet. It's got some booty power, it's got a hot booty, if you will and you really don't want a missile to hit you where Papa Stalin split you. Uh, this twin-engined high push maiden of the sky made for domination and built out of energy. It might not be the fastest jet at this tier, but it is certainly and far and away the most capable of sustained maneuvering. So you really, really don't want to find yourself low on energy when this lass is in the area and one last enemy takes him down with a nicely aimed shot 
I wish I could say the same for myself there. I definitely did not need to push up when I did on that Panzer IV, but uh, the low tier hijinks, the, what is this, uh, three point, is this a 3.3, I think? US lineup uh, got me a little bit too confident. It might be 3.7. I think the Ram is a 3.7 and a very good one at that. Kind of expected my round to do a bit more against his albeit complicated uh, turret armor and the accuracy on this gun, excuse me, my voice cracked a little bit there. The accuracy on this gun is not quite good enough to reliably aim for the chin as we get the shot there on the T-34. The Ram more than makes up for that in terms of armor protection, being surprisingly tanky when compared with Shermans that are at its own battle rating and even having some rather solid, somewhat complicated turret armor to back that up with and an extremely fast reload on its British style AP shooting cannon. You kind of miss the AP HE rounds that you get with other vehicles like the uh, Event Premium Boarhound that we'll see later. Uh, that's the T18 E2 armored car, one of the heaviest, chonkiest armored cars in the game and with a very hard hitting cannon 57 millimeters i think in a versatile mounting that responds quite nicely i think that's another panzer IV. so we angled our side armor but he didn't appear to be looking at us indeed such is the case so we go ahead and hold reverse while turret traversing to put a couple into him and send him back to the vehicle select screen this was a lineup that I chose because I just wanted to have some fun. This is the one match, yeah, I think it is the only match of regular War Thunder I played today, apart from the World War mode that I rubbed out real quick before the kids needed me too much today. <laughs> so I didn't want to uh, leave my wife hanging watching the girls and the little man for too long so i tried not to play too much war thunder today on that note um i'm kicking around an idea in my head as i get bullied a little bit by an aircraft here about uh mixing things up a little bit on my channel there's a there's a project that i have in mind and it's going to take a lot of time to come to fruition and it's way too early to you know properly announce anything because I haven't decided on things yet but I I'm getting excited already I uh, I want to I want to make some fun videos that sort of are a little bit different kind of video than what you've seen on this channel for a very very long time the return of tank cop probably not but not super far off if I'd have my druthers. And now I've got some friends to help me out with uh, production value. <laughs> it's not going to be a huge change from what you've seen in the past, but I'm really going to have a good time. Uh, a lot more fun than trying to avoid getting shot down in the premium P61. And this is one example of a premium vehicle that's significantly less competitive than its regular tech tree counterpart the p61 i think it's a c in the regular tech tree battle rating 4.0 usa is one of the finest heavy fighters in the game for a variety of reasons some of which are shared by the premium p61 a uh, but you lack the wing pylons uh, and thus the ability to carry four 1,000 pound bombs. You keep the turret, you keep the 420 mils to blaze it toward your enemies, uh, but you also lose the ability for WEP on your engines, which gives a significant advantage to the P61C. And you may notice I'm something of a collector here. Uh, by the way, our daily task 
is to win a battle placing a certain place in our team. And uh, I've already pretty much locked in uh, either first, second, or third place, but I need to win this battle for my daily task. I did mention this was the one regular War Thunder battle I fought today, so you might be able to guess the outcome, but it was a hard fought campaign. So enjoyable to get back to Skill Thunder, where the tier is low, the salt is high, and you have to do things like aim without too much assistance from hand-holding technology. And uh, oh, I, I love that throat singing in the background, by the way. Um, that's a skill that I should pick up. Oh, yeah, okay, I'm already, I'm digging it, I'm digging it. New soundtrack theme song for Toshio Thunder in the works, in the works. You might have to wait a little longer for that one. <laughs> but I was going to tell you that, uh, what even the heck is the name of this thing? I can't quite remember the a harpoon? Something like that. Anyway, PV2D Harpoon. It is indeed uh, this girthy girl, uh, this thick bomber, is based off of a civilian airliner. Uh, you can see these wings are made for efficiency, which is key in uh, civilian aeronautics. Why not? industry because uh, wasted fuel is wasted money uh, so you can tell we're built for high altitude performance but uh, we like to put on a show down here down low where you go and this bomber attacker is equipped to the brim with offensive and defensive ordnance so we'll see if we can't uh, pick up some more points here enough to respawn in something spicy and we're really taking hits in this match you know low tier is fun tier and it's a nice place to take a vacation but you start getting into the uh, around the 4.0 battle rating once the germans get a hold of that punchy 75 millimeter cannon and you start facing some opposition that can make a mess out of you in short order. Uh, I suspect there are more people like myself that enjoy vacationing in low tier and uh, like I said didn't have a lot of time to play battles today, had a task to do well and so I picked one of my lineups that I both enjoy and tend to do fairly well in. Uh, in fact, <laughs> packed to the brim with premium vehicles uh, you already know that as a collector and a guy that likes to see numbers go up uh, cookie clicker addiction certified um, I love my premium slash event vehicles and this is a node in the American line where those things really really come together the T18 is probably my favorite armored car. It has just enough mobility to surpass some medium tanks in the American line. It has just enough armor to surpass many light tanks, especially in terms of survivability, as this is not a vehicle that hold breaks easily. And it has a fantastic gun, as I mentioned, and I now demonstrate. And there is an Italian Pasta Boy AEC built in a much later date and yet not built to defeat me moving around the area somewhere. Haven't picked up a kill assist on him yet, so he's he's somewhere, but he he are you an N O F T <laughs> He must have known what's best for him as the enemy spawn points start to finally victory points I should say start to finally tick down we have good control of the map my team continued respawning and fighting well in this match not only did they provide good solid support 
but they also moved around in positions well to dominate territory and hang in there. And the GG is definitely earned in this case. And if not, I would still shoot it out there. Everybody has their bad days and their good days in this game. And sometimes it seems like you just can't win. And you know what? I think playing some top tier or at least... And 9.0 is probably the extent of, of how far I'm willing to go. Um, I don't feel like facing Leo 2A5s all day, so I'll stay out of the 10.0 range. <laughs> and uh, once again, fantastic gun on this very tanky armored car. And that's it. Boy, those tickets bled out fast. In any event, thanks for watching today, and I'll hope to catch you in the next one. I will very soon... Uh, be done with World War Mode, in fact, shortly after this video comes out. Catch you guys in the next video, and as always, there's a link to my Discord in the description of this video. That is the best place to get a hold of me, even though it might take me a while to notice things. That's just the way life is for me now. Bye-bye.